Hello, today is Friday, the uh, 14th day of December 2012, and welcome uh, to uh, today's video, which will be uh, technical analysis on the Dow Jones weekly chart, as well as multiple time frame on silver. But before we do that, I went to measuringwealth.com. Lots of great data on that webpage. And I'm going to use uh, two different fields, or two different types of data within this particular analysis. One, inflation for the United States going back to 1775, as well as unskilled wages for the United States going back to pretty much the same time frame, which was $33 a year in 74. Wow. What we're going to do now is plot these two together with the chart. And uh, we'll do that now. So what I did is I started the exact same number of inflation with 33 just to match this. And this is what the chart looks like. Therefore, the wages have went up this way and inflation has went up like that. Now, does this make much sense? You'd think, well, if my wages went up tripled and products doubled, I'd be doing pretty good. Okay, well, let's look at a few variables to why this would be the case. Number one... I, the inflation numbers may be just a little bit skewed, because this is official levels. And number two, what parts of inflation do not only are, do not only the media not talk about, but a lot of other people? And I can think of things like debt. Debt payments are much higher. Interest payments are much higher than they ever have been before, or they're higher than it was 20 years ago. 20 years ago, it was higher than it was then 20 years ago, and so on and so forth. You also have uh, different types of taxes. There's, they tax you on many, many, many different ways, all these different types of service fees that airlines and colleges and so forth charge. These are the little miscellaneous things, as well as total item needed uh, or inflation of how amount of things you get. Maybe the average person would buy 20 different products and services 30 years ago. Now they're buying 30, 40 kind of deal. There's another kind of inflation. So with that said, I'm going to divide this number by this number. And that will be dividing the uh, wages of unskilled workers by inflation. And this is the chart up and then sideways now for the last 40 years. We're going back to the 1970s, which is thus telling us that wages are going up with inflation official values instead of higher than it has this whole time. And then, of course, you throw in all the skewed numbers and the fact of the debts and all that. Yeah, it's pretty bad. So that's the data there from MeasuringWealth.com. Let's now we'll go on to the uh, Dow Jones Industrials. Now, earlier on this channel, I was talking about uh, a 13,200 as an area for shorting, which is obviously 65 points below that now. However, I was extremely unrisky and putting the stop loss at uh, 13 to or 13 230 or 325 and it came up to 329 so four point hit that's how the game is played but with that being said you can notice here look at that you have this uh, bullish candle and then went up to here and now we got this bearish candle you got this high this low we've got these pattern of higher highs and higher lows so I guess until either this high is taken out or this low is taken out, you can consider it very neutral within this time frame. Now, it would be cool if you could have a chart software. You see situations like here, and you see this ugly mess, or especially if you look at this individually, each uh, uh, candle, like this candle, this candle, this candle. It's a lot of uh, volatile stuff. So I wish there'd be a program where you could just say, okay, I almost want to see it from here to around here sometime. But from this high, and I just want to see it from boom, boom. Or even just, I just want to see this candle, and the, everything within just one candle. That option is very hard to find. But with that being said, let's take a look at it from here to here, and we'll do that uh, right now. So we'll go back into uh, 2011, December the 9th. And this is, of course, uh, what it looked like. Just something interesting to point out. There's your failed breakdown before the thing goes higher. And there's going to be a lot of those types of things that we see especially when we look at the silver chart, which we're going to look at now. Uh, but before we do that, I just want to point out, like I do many uh, times within the Dow when I talk about it, that we are entering 2013 and the uh, debt ceiling, which uh, is uh, approaching. And the last time that happened, well, that was in here. Okay, so let's move on to the daily chart for silver. And uh, this is uh, what we're seeing down today at uh, 26 cents or about four-fifths of 1%. 
And uh, this thing is now again showing a lot of uh, choppy action. We uh, have, of course, this low, which is greater than the breakout low. We have this high, uh, lower than this high. And who knows if this low is going to be lower than, uh, higher than this one. Very difficult to state. As far as the very short-term analysis is concerned, you're just looking at the last uh, three, four, five candles itself. It's in the process of breaking down, as we are seeing this now, whether it's going to make a test in here. Very difficult to say, but more so, it's actually more important to show the more longer-term time frames. Not even really the weekly chart, but the monthly and the quarterly, which we're going to in bit. But what I like about this is... I talk about a game like chess or magic or any game where team A or player A goes and the next person changes turns, bears and bulls, talking about the highs and the lows and so forth, so on and so forth. Well, I stated in here, this high doesn't have to be as high as this one, and it wasn't, as long as it makes a higher low, and this would be a higher low as well. So therefore, if it manages to do something like this, I'm going to consider this to be the low. But what's important to note is we've had one, two, three tests of around the 35 level. We've had three tests of around the 26 level. So therefore, when you have that many resistance and support tests, you call that neutral, consolidation, and decisive until you break out of the range to one direction. And that's why for so long before I was stating, you know what, until we get a clear uh, break above this level, confirmation break, or move down to 20, I'm really going to say, I don't know. Now, of course, I think if it goes down to 20, that it will be short-lived as a failed breakdown. But throwing that aside, let's uh, move this on to the monthly chart. And we're going to uh, see here that it might be the next 6 to 16 months, if not a couple months, that this thing is going to be making its move, the play, if you will, very, very soon. Therefore... We have this running average, unlike the other ones that are uh, not so bullish, this one is. We can see this, like the Bollinger Bands almost. These are upper and lower, upper and, uh, lower bands, but they work in the same sort of ideology. They are com this one's coming down, this one's coming up. When you see that, they don't know how long it's going to take, but brace yourselves for the big move to take place. Let's look at trend line analysis now. We'll see similar different kinds of things. Let's connect these lows in here. Okay, so there we go. Connect the lows. There we have it. And let's connect this high in here. Well, we're seeing that we're in this break, the symmetrical triangle that uh, you can say it's broken this uh, trend line, which it has, but it's at the point where it's going to say, hey, okay, what's going on here? What's the trend going to be? Is it going to be the resumption of this uptrend, or are we going to continue the downtrend? Still, it's not clear yet what of the, which of the two is going to be in play very soon. Now, let's take a look at some numbers now. This month, which is, of course, December, the lowest price that I've got recorded is $32.19, with the highest being $33.84. That is a move of 5.13%, thus the volatility for the month. That's extremely low. You're pretty much going back to like here, that kind of nature. Therefore, we have also now spent the last 11 periods or the last 11 months starting in here with volatility less than 18%. The 13 months that preceded this beforehand 10 of those 13 were actually greater than the number that every single one has been lower than. Therefore, now that we've had to even this further, the last four months, these little four little pieces here that has been this little flaggish kind of formation, well, each one of those months has had less than 12% volatility. Not 18, but 12 now, the last time that we would go back to have four consecutive months or more with, it's actually 12.5%, excuse me, because I'm writing my notes, to have less than 12.5% volatility would take us back to uh, October of 2005, where there was eight straight. So where would October 2005 be on the chart? Right here, right as it's breaking out. Now, what we're going to do with this is... Uh, Move this on to the quarterly time frame. And we're going to see uh, similar sort of things in here. Now, before we had the upper and lower bands going up and down. Now we got both of these in an uptrend. This, of course, is in 
an uptrend. You also, for everyone want to draw these trend lines, it's in an uptrend, and you only have a small cons a consolidation within this as we're looking at it. Okay, so now let's go for some numbers for this quarter, which is almost over. As we have went through two and a half months, we got one half of a month to go. The lowest price is $30.80. We are well above that level now. And the highest price is $35.40. We are well below that level as well. Therefore, the volatility there is 14.94%. It's just a small candle in here. Now, the last time it was this low was quarter three of 2005 when it was 14.48%. That 14.48% move was right in here. And then, of course, what followed was a big break higher, and it was in an indecisive consolidation period, as we're seeing in here. So that's very much interesting, to say the least. So what we're going to do in here is switch this up. Just like I did with the Dow, you want to see from point A to point B. This is what I want to see here. I want to see it from here, this low, in 2001, up to this breakout high. That's what I want to see. Because I want to see what occurred in here and how everything worked. And like I say, it'd be cool if you had a, if you're looking at a chart and say, I just want to see from here to here. So put me on whatever time frames are needed to put me there. Well, the time frame that's needed is a 12 day. And that's what we're going to take a look at. And the 12 day ending, April the 11th, 2006, which was at the top. So let's take a look at this, shall we? You had this uptrend and this move in here. Now, what you really didn't have too much of was a failed breakdown. Maybe a little bit in here, but not a major one. Broke by this resistance, off she went. Now, it's important to note, when you look at older charts, especially in the exact same market that you're looking at, is that it's important to see this for what's the market or what's the price action capable of doing is it capable of having major gains with uh, out much of uh, corrections or just shorter term corrections well it went from four and a half to eight and a half that's almost double and then we broke out of uh, from this uh, 670 area up to 15 that's about 140 percent straight up like that and of course there's been other recent time frames back in 2010 2011 when it did it it does it a lot so do, uh, when you see it happening again, just realize that it's normal for this type of thing to go on. Final chart, I want to extend this thing uh, for the uh, period ending May of 2006. But take a look at this more long term. This is again another historical chart. And here we go. And I want to do this because, again, you can see this type of pattern just breaking out like this. But what's important is its similarities to the long-term silver chart. Meaning this being the $50 silver, this being the $4 silver. Here's the similarities. After having a fast move higher, it corrected fast, back down, and then had a long sideways consolidation. Rallied pretty fast back up to its previous level where it immediately sold off very hard. And then, a consult then it had a... A decent uh, consolidation correction, meaning it corrected fine, holding, holding this 18 band, but you can see all this type of uh, movement. Now look what it happened when it broke the resistance straight up. Now I'm not saying by any means that when 50 gets broken, it's going straight up. More so, when you have major resistance that gets tested in this type of nature, it's not a surprise when you have breakouts for things like that to take place. And again, this could be something that happens in a week, in a month, in a year, or even longer. I don't know, but things to uh, look out for. So that'll be it for today's video, something I accomplished in less, well less than 20 minutes. I was hoping to do it in 17, 18. It looks like I got it done in under 15. So thank you for tuning in, and have yourself an amazing weekend. Bye-bye.